All right, Return of Rome. Um, okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little sour on this one. Stick around to find out why, but I'm going to start this review by simply covering what is and isn't included in this Age 2 Definitive DLC, so that we're all on the same page, and so you can hopefully see where I'm coming from. Feel free to skip to this timestamp if you already know what's here and you just want to hear my opinions. Right, so what is this? Age of Empires 2 Derivative Edition Return to Rome is a DLC expansion in the same vein as the previous releases like Lords of the West and Dynasties of India. It is not standalone, you must own Age 2 Definitive to play it. That part's important, we'll circle back to it later. The DLC is at its core a port of Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition into the Age 2 Definitive engine and client. Everything is harmonious, to play the Age 1 content, you simply boot into Age 2 and select it from the side panel. It brings over all of the existing factions from Age 1, as well as adding one new one, the Luck Viet. The DLC also adds three new campaigns to Age 1, but crucially it does not bring over the previous campaigns from the original Definitive Edition into this DLC. It's easy to imagine some sort of crossover here, with the Age 1 stuff being brought into Age 2, but it's important to make clear that these are completely separate entities. They have nothing to do with each other, okay? They may use the same button on Steam, but once you click that button, you're in your own little world. That is except for the new faction for Age 2 that this DLC brings in the Romans. But again, this is totally separate. They're only in Age 2, and they follow all of the same Age 2 guidelines that every other faction does. I'll review this faction and portion of this DLC separately nearer the end of this video, but we're going to start with Age 1. So in totality, this is more of an Age 1 definitive expansion rather than Age 2. Except you need to own the latter, the former is now irrelevant, and now we have two separate best versions of Age of Empires 1. Or do we? Um, yes, actually, get out of here Vsauce. Go upload something for God's sake. Right, we're all on the same page. We know what's here, we know what's not here, and we know what's different. So let's discuss it. Starting with the single player experience in Return of Rome, the new campaigns are great and I quite enjoyed them. The mission scenarios are unique, the voice acting is pretty good, and the presentation style, done in the Age of Empires 2 format rather than the Age of Empires 1 format, is a welcome change. The missions all make the most of their transition into the Age 2 client, and a lot of these straight up wouldn't work if they were attempted in the original. Additions like gates and trade carts are often core mechanics or key obstacles that are in your way, and you need to utilize that to win. The objective of killing this guy in the Saigon campaign, for example, would be much easier if you could just charge in and snipe him without the gate, rather than needing to break through with all these towers firing on you as it is right now. The campaigns aren't super long, but to be fair, the standard difficulty is quite easy, and playing through all these on the harder ones would certainly bring up the total hours required to knock them out. But there's only three, and each of them have five missions. And I almost can't believe that the original campaigns weren't brought over from Age 1 Definitive into this DLC. Maybe it was decided that it would just be too much work to remake them and not have them break with the new Age of Empires 2 mechanics. Maybe they thought no one wanted them. I don't know. Whatever the reason, it's an absolute mess having some of the campaigns here, while the rest are back in an entirely different game. I can only hope they'll bring them in retroactively at a later date, but there's been no word on anything like that so far. I have to imagine that the addition of all these new mechanics is the core reason that the original campaigns weren't brought over with everything else. With its new home in the Age 2 client, there are many things, big and small, that are now different from the base game. And I don't mean the base original game, I mean the base definitive game. A lot of these are incredibly welcome changes that make the game objectively better. AI for example has vastly improved. Pathfinding, one of the core issues with every edition of Age of Empires 1, is now on par with Age 2 and it's leagues better. The performance issues that were present in Age 1 Definitive are completely gone. UI and the general quality of life both pick up all of the advancements of Age 2 and Age 2 Definitive, so that's segmented menus for civilian and military buildings, red text showing when you don't have enough resources to buy or build something, automatically resetting farms by default, a town bell to call of your villagers to your town centre so you don't have to do it manually. Wait a minute. 
Age of Empires 1 doesn't have the ability to garrison units, nor does it have gates, or trade carts, or formations, or the ability to buy and sell resources. So what's going on here? Surely these changes must have some significant implications on gameplay. Are they fundamentally changing what Age of Empires 1 is? Is this even Age of Empires 1 anymore? Sure, the pathfinding sucked ass in the definitive edition, but that's because it sucked ass in the original. It was Age of Empires, just repackaged for a modern audience. I dare say that this, Return of Rome, isn't Age of Empires at all. It's just Age of Empires 2, with a classic coat of paint. And is that necessarily a bad thing? Well, no, of course not. But it does leave me confused, and with a lot of questions. Questions like, why does this DLC even exist? Why is this not an expansion to Age 1 Definitive? Or even better, a standalone product? Why is this not standalone? Why? If you're wanting people to move from Age 1 Definitive, why are you requiring them to buy Age 2 Definitive just to buy and play this DLC? That, as we've mentioned, is entirely segmented from Age 2. Imagine if this was standalone, it could even allow use of the new Roman faction only in Age of Empires 2 to onboard people to that game for a cheaper asking price. You know, just cut away the campaigns, cut away the other factions, and let you play the Romans, that's all. If you want to play the others, then you can buy the game. And this leads well into asking who this DLC is for. Like, who's asking for this? Does the average Age of Empires 2 definitive player want one new faction? and a port of Age of Empires 1 Definitive for 25 bucks? I know the guys I play with would take a lot of convincing to make that purchase, because they just don't have a lot of interest in the first game, and I don't think they want to pay that much for one faction. Does the average Age of Empires 1 Definitive player, who do exist by the way, the numbers are there, do they want a new version of a game that they thought they were already playing the ultimate version of? I mean it's in the name, Definitive Edition. There shouldn't be another one. And not only that, but do they want a version that doesn't even include all of the content from early releases? I'm just... I'm just so confused. Because overall, yeah, I do think Return of Rome is an improved, upgraded version of Age of Empires. And I personally don't see any reason to go back now and play that definitive edition. Obviously except for the campaigns if I wanted to do that. But if those got brought over, then there's really nothing there at all to go back to. I just don't see why we needed this, because if I'm booting Age of Empires 2, 99% of the time, I'm playing Age of Empires 2. With a lot of series, there are reasons to go back and play earlier games. Maybe the mechanics are fundamentally different, it's more technically sound, whatever. But in my mind, and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of you, Age of Empires 2 is an upgrade of Age of Empires 1 in nearly every conceivable way. Sure, I get nostalgia for Age 1 and go back ever so often to experience it, but I don't get nostalgia for Age 2, I play it. I'm not even close to the nostalgic phase because I'm still enjoying it. To this day, I play the definitive edition often with IRL friends or as part of our Discord gaming sessions. So ultimately, yeah, while Return of Rome is a better Age of Empires 1, it's simply a worse Age of Empires 2 in my mind. And I'm just not sure why Microsoft decided to dedicate what is assumedly a lot of development time and it's something that just feels so unnecessary. Look, I'll make final conclusions at the end of this video, but for now, let's shift to Age of Empires 2 and their new faction, the Romans. Okay, um, Editor Zade here, it's like 1 in the morning. I just wanted to add this little part in, farms are like totally broken right now. I don't know what's going on, basically if you build farms next to each other, villages will just get like stunlocked and they won't do anything. I'm sure they'll fix this, but we just finished a game and it's a pain in the ass. The historically minded among you might be thinking, wait, didn't we already have the Romans in Age 2? Well, you see, those are Romans at home. These are the Western Romans, though both them and the Byzantines would surely call themselves true successors to ancient Rome from Age 1. The new faction here in Age 2 is similar in style to their earlier counterparts, being infantry and siege focused, with some very powerful units but lacking in key areas. They receive two unique units, the Centurion, a heavy cavalry unit that boosts infantry in its aura, and the Legionary, a tough as nails infantryman who replaces the top end of the militia line past the longswords. They also get two unique techs, one that boosts scorpion and galley line firing rates, and one that makes knight and militia line units train 50% faster while also granting them a charge attack. Not too shabby. The unique units of the Romans are likely their strongest asset. These guys are tough, and thanks to the bonus that the centurion's aura gives, they work great as a team. 
but even on their own, they outclass most of their counterparts. The Centurion can beat equivalent heavy cav units with ease in one-on-one -on -one combat, and the Legionary can do the same bar one. They can't withstand the insane damage of the elite Teutonic Knight. Their charge attack bonus definitely helps in staged fights like this, but it gives you an idea of their raw strength. Roman Infantry also receives a bonus to armour, with all their blacksmith upgrades counting double in that regard. Though, as a faction, they aren't able to research plate mail armour, which stops that ability from going too overboard. There are quite a few things the Romans can't access actually, which helps to balance their powerful units and team bonuses. Others of which include a 5% improvement to villager efficiency stats, improvement to galley line ships, and bonuses to scorpion siege units. The primary downfall of the Romans is their lack of basically anything top end in the archery department, and some key losses in defensive research. I won't sit here and pretend that I'm nearly good enough at Age of Empires 2 to have the lack of these technologies make a meaningful difference in my games, but hey, it's information that's good to know. One other good thing to know is that the Romans aren't able to be played in ranked multiplayer games yet, but that's going to be coming soon after people asked why, when it was initially said that they'd be barred permanently from the start. Will the Romans be a competitive faction on the ladder? Jeez, I don't know, don't ask me, I'm nowhere near that scene. But I've been having fun with them, their units are cool, and they fit in well to the team composition I usually play within, which is me with the swords, a mate with the siege, and a mate with the sergeants. So then, where does that leave Return of Rome? Who should buy it? Should you? Do I even recommend it to anyone? Uh, well, uh, yeah, like maybe. It, it really depends on who you are. If you're an Age 2 player and you don't care about Age 1 at all, then 25 bucks for one faction is a hard ask, and you'll likely want to pick this one up on sale for maybe five, ten dollars if you're interested in some Roman action. Otherwise, I'd say you can comfortably pass on this one. If you're a big time Age 1 enjoyer and you already own Age 2 Definitive, then yeah, this is probably an easy buy for you. The campaigns are a good time, and playing classic Age 1 with a hearty injection of Age 2 mechanics and systems is certainly unique for those experienced with the original. But it's going to be a personal thing to whether you find that uniqueness worth sticking around for time and time again, or if it simply becomes a play it once or twice a year for something different kind of thing. My final conclusion really is one of just slight disappointment. Sure for me I like the DLC, but I can't help but wish that this was something else. Something that would interest more people, and move the needle forward for Age of Empires 2. A game that in of itself is immensely popular and it's still pulling in new players today. I'd be surprised if this DLC pack garnered much momentum for Age of Empires as a series, but I'd certainly love to be proven wrong here. But if I had the choice between this and another DLC like Jukes, I'd choose the latter every time. You know, it's funny, when I first heard about this DLC, I thought it was adding Age 1 factions and content directly into Age 2, like playable side by side. A big job no doubt, but being that the DLC was announced at Age's 25th anniversary, it seemed applicable. The DLC to end all DLCs. 17 new factions, a new way to play, old versus new, that kind of thing. But the more I heard about it, the more just disappointed I became. The best way I can sum it up is this. I understand why Return of Rome is different, and even better than the definitive edition we got in 2017, but I don't understand why it exists. You've probably heard the saying that there are no bad products, only bad prices. If this thing was cheaper, or maybe available as two separate purchases for those who weren't interested in one of the two aspects, say maybe you just wanted to buy the faction, or maybe you just wanted the campaigns, then maybe that would be enough for me to give it a general recommendation. But it's not, so I can't. You might be the right person for this DLC, you'll know who you are by now, but if you're not, skip this one until the price is right for you, whether that time comes or not. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition Return of Rome is available now on Steam for 25 New Zealand dollars. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support me and what I do here, then consider doing so either on Patreon or here via YouTube memberships. You'll join legends like Eero, Cruzy218, Jack, Nutty Jawa, Overlord Jeebus, T Edits, Crispy Robo Chicken, XV204, Benjamin, David, Cynical Cheddar, Sebastian, Dakayo, David, Nintendo, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Grey Spirit 4, Peter, Tim, George, Nedders, Animal Paladins, Johnny Woof, Strateger, and Eric. Thanks guys. 
and thank you all very much for watching and making it to the end and i'll see you all next time